Hey guys, it's Captain Chris Cease with Not The World Fly Fishing. Uh, today I'm gonna be tying a fly that I call a pheasant drum bugger, which is a shallow water redfish fly that I've been tying using a uh, ring neck pheasant hackle and a little bit of marabou from that bird. Um, it's a great fly for casting at shallow water redfish that might be kind of spooky or cruising higher up on the surface of the water column. You can also catch sheep's head and sea trout on it, and it's also a good pattern for trout or smallmouth bass imitating a crayfish. It's a pretty easy pattern to tie. There's just a few other materials like flash, legs, eyes, and a flyman shrimp and cray tail, um, but the rest of it is simply tied out of ringneck pheasant feathers. Um, so it's a great little pattern I've been using for the past couple of years uh, to catch a bunch of shallow water redfish. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with a size two hook. Um, you can use just about any version that you'd like, um, but what I'm using here is the new Umpqua X series hooks. Uh, these are pretty cool. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and get rocking and rolling here by putting our thread on the hook and tying on the fly men's shrimp and cray tail. I am using the medium size gold here. And so this is a cool little product they've got out that um, is a little different than the standard lead eyes or bead chain eyes that you would use. Just gives it a little bit more of a natural look and profile of something like a shrimp or a crab than you would have with the eyes. So we go ahead and tie this on. I'm gonna wrap our thread back to the bend. And I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue here brushable super glue and I'm just going to brush this on here to solidify my wrap so it does not turn or anything like that uh, if I hook a couple fish on this fly. Um, next we're going to go ahead and take the pheasant skin. Um, these are pretty readily available through a lot of different fly shops, stores, uh, outfitters. Um, you can also get them from your friends that might go hunting in the fall because they're Pretty common bird, uh, but you'll notice here on the back side of it, there's some marabou feathers. Um, and this is what we're gonna use as the tail. Several of these kind of go from like a gray or a dark brown to a light tan. And they make a pretty cool looking tail on this. So we're gonna pluck one off. There we go, measure it out. Let's make sure that super glue isn't very sticky anymore. It looks like I've actually got two feathers here, but I'll just roll with it. And we're gonna go ahead and tie that on. Cut off our excess. Flip this over, tie in a little bit of flash. You can use whatever flash you like. You don't have to use flash. I'm using some ripple ice fiber in gold. That's what I had uh, laying around here on the desk. Just a couple strands is all you need. Go ahead, tie that in. And there we have our tail of our pheasant bugger. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start picking out the feathers, guys, we're gonna use for this fly. As you can see here, there's a lot of really cool markings in pheasant. We're gonna generally be using stuff here on the middle and the sides. And basically, we're just tying a bunch of these in and wrapping them down the hook shank, much like you would just with a regular hackle. And it comes out to be a really cool, natural looking uh, shrimp pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and tie the first one in. You do, I do recommend that you've got some uh, hackle pliers. This makes this job a lot easier. Got some here and I also like to, with each time I tie one in, put a little bit of super glue on the shank to strengthen the integrity of the fly. So hopefully you'll be catching a lot of redfish with these. This one has a few broken fibers, but that's okay. So 
So I've got kind of a tan or almost a gold colored feather here off the flank. I go ahead, tie it down, wrap it back. You can kind of see it's just all different lengths on it. And I, guys, I don't even end up cutting the tips off of these feathers. I just tie them in, just leave it. Um, I've also got some pre-made eyes here that I made out of monofilament where I burned the ends of them and then coated it with a little bit of UV glue and then it colored that with a Sharpie. And what that does, it creates a really cool uh, translucent looking eyes. And then after I coated it with a Sharpie, I hit it one more time with the uh, UV glue. Um, but this is how I design all of my shrimp and crab eyes. And that gives it another little uh, buggy, shrimpy appearance. Um, and they can also kind of double as weed guards kind of protecting the sides of the point of the hook. Um, they make your fly just look a little bit better. They're not necessary if you don't want to go through this step because they're kind of a pain in the butt to create. But I do like to tie them into a lot of patterns. So I'm going to tie those on top of the shank here using a bunch of figure X or figure eight and X wraps, excuse me. And I'll also go ahead and add super glue right on top. And then I'm gonna go to the legs. Just got a spinner get, spinnerbait skirt here. You guys can use kind of whatever legs you want. Um, dealer's choice on terms of colors. This is a black and tan and kind of reddish color. So it looks, matches the coloring of the uh, pheasant feathers. I'm going to tie two in on each side. You could do as many as four if you wanted. Uh, two is plenty, though. Just to give it a little bit more action. Trim the excess legs off. I'm going to go ahead and pick out another feather here. Actually, I'll pull a couple out. I'm using kind of these gold ones here. Maybe I'll do something a little more brown in it. And so you can really make these flies kind of any tone that you'd like, if you will, with what comes on those, uh, on those feathers. I like to strip the fluff off the end. Go ahead and just tie in right there at the base of the fibers that I'm going to use. I'll trim my excess. Again with the super glue. And this pattern is light enough that you could throw it in really shallow water at Spooky Redfish. Um, that's kind of what I designed it for. Um, I find that as the season goes along, I am fishing more and more natural colors throughout the summer as the fish I'm targeting mostly in coastal North Carolina are getting more and more pressured uh, by spin fishermen and other fly fishermen and oftentimes are throwing bright colors. Um, and it seems to me that those fish, if they've been picked at a few times, um, kind of get a little more wary and they will go ahead and take something that's a little more natural looking more readily than they would something that they might shy away from like a big giant gold flashy fly which i throw a lot of those as well but um it just seems as the seasons have gone on i'm using more and more natural uh, particularly in the really clear water uh, this would also be an exceptionally good winter fly uh, in a place like the low country where you've got super clear water and schools of fish um, and you just are trying to kind of sneak up on them, get something that lands very light and uh, attract a attract a solid bite from a fish that's that's pretty wary at that time of the year. 
So you can see here, I'm just kind of adding these feathers on, guys. It's a really simple pattern. Gets really kind of bushy and buggy looking, much like a woolly bugger. Um, but it's just going to have that shrimp profile to it. It's kind of a pain in the butt these uh, pheasant feathers aren't longer <laughs> like a regular hackle is, but it's just kind of the name of the game. And be careful if you're using the super glue, you're not, you don't have to, but uh, just be wary of it. Um, you know, if you want to back up, if you will, once you put that super glue down, it's kind of hard to do so because it really latches onto those fibers. Um, it's also super easy to get your fingers stuck to the fly. So just something else to take into account there with that. Just get that really natural look. Pull out a couple more. I'm gonna pull out one of these feathers, guys, right in here, show you kind of how that looks. You tie it in. They're even shorter, so they don't get a whole lot of wraps out of them, maybe two at most, but gosh, it's such a cool looking, um, cool looking pattern on the feather that it make, looks really cool on the fly. I generally use one or two of those to finish off the fly at the front of the hook. You could use a regular chicken hackle on something like this if you want to, like grizzly or Cree or whatever, if you had a really couple long ones and not go through so many of the steps to have the pheasant um, feathers, but then it wouldn't be a pheasant bugger, then it'd be a regular saltwater bugger. Okay, so I probably got room for one more. I'm gonna add this one, the one with the really cool barred markings there. There we go. And if you want, you can add a weed guard on here on the front on a, like a post version. I didn't give myself a whole lot of room on this pattern. Um, so I'm not gonna force it and make it overkill, if you will. I'll just save this one for a winter day when I'm not throwing around a lot of weeds. But there you've got that fly ready to rock and roll and throw out some redfish. Finish off a little bit of super glue or head cement, UV, whatever you prefer. And that thing should be pretty, uh, pretty tough for those fish. Hopefully you catch a lot of fish on fly like this. So there you go. Thanks for checking in. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.